Welcome to Developing Palettes. This review recap is brought to you by J.C. Newman. Founded in 1895 by Julius Caesar Newman, J.C. Newman Cigar Company is the oldest family-owned premium cigar maker in America. J.C. Newman rolls its El Rolage, factory throwouts, and Trader Jack cigars by hand-operated vintage cigar machines at its historic cigar factory in Tampa, Florida. It also hand-rolls its Brick House, Perla Del Mar, El Baton, and Quorum cigars at the J.C. Newman Pinza Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. J.C. Newman's Diamond Crown, Maximus, Julius Caesar, and Black Diamond cigars are handmade at Tabaclera Afuente in the Dominican Republic. With its longtime partners, the Fuente family, the Newmans founded the Cigar Family Charitable Foundation, which supports low-income families in the Dominican Republic with education, health care, vocational training, and clean water. Learn more by visiting jcnewman.com. Hello, everyone. Aaron Loomis here from the Ventura Cigar Company studio. With me today is June Liu, Seth Geist, John McTavish. How you guys doing? Cuevas. Getting tested for the Cuevas. Make the pollen right. go away. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so today we are talking about the Casa Cuevas Connecticut Toro. Uh, cigar is 6 inch by 50 ring gauge. Comes out of the Tabacalera Las Lavas factory in the Dominican Republic. Uh, wrappers Ecuadorian Connecticut. Binders from Nicaragua. Filler is from the Dominican Republic and Nicaragua. Uh, price point is $7.30, and the cigar was released in April of 2017. So, June, how about you tell us about your smoking experience? Okay. <laughs> I will. <laughs> All right. Um... <laughs> All right. Uh, it was a good cigar. Um, you know, uh, there's. <laughs> sorry, got a little something in my throat. Get it uh, together, June. <laughs> Come on, right. June. You know, there, there's. Uh, so <laughs> right off the bat, um, cigar is super sweet, creamy, um, and that basically held on throughout the whole profile, which I really liked. So in addition to that sweet creaminess, um, I got a lot of like this, like toasted bread. Uh, roasted onionness to it. Um, I would say the uh, there's also this like like baking uh, spices, cedar uh, note as well. And as the cigar kind of went through, those two notes became uh, more prevalent. But the cigar was still like has a really nice core of it being really nice, uh, sweet, creamy, bready kind of a thing going on. So I very much so enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was consistently good uh, as a result of that. Uh, medium body, medium strength kind of a, a thing going on. Um, in terms of construction, um, I rate it both to be very good. Um, flaky ashes, uh, which is why I didn't give it a perfect burn score. And uh, it was a loader tight, uh, which is why I didn't give it a perfect score again. So. All right, Seth, how about you? Yeah, man. Uh, first third, you know, subtle creamy aspects. There's some cedar. There's some sweet earth. Um, some soft spices. There was like that Asian spice. Um, just kind of a solid Connecticut offering. Uh, medium in strength. I found the body just kind of be above medium, medium, medium full. Um, second, third, you know, a lot of similarities to that of the first. Um, major focus on cedar and cream. Um, increase in the spice, which was nice. So the body and strength probably went up to that medium, medium full level. Um, and then when I get into the final third, it's uh, diminished flavor profile. Uh, flavor profile. There's still the cream, some spices, some shaved wood. Um, really shaved wood notes are prominent with some just spices towards the end. Medium full to full. Uh, no, not medium full to full. Medium, medium full towards the end, man. Decent construction. Wasn't really blown away by it. Um, the burn, the burn draw was a little tight, so that wasn't enjoyable. What about you, John? This is enjoyable. Uh, sweet hay, some cedar, really nice. Like June was saying there's some really nice baking spices. and I, I like that none of the flavors are jacking on my palate to begin with. There is some light pepper, but it's not in your face. It's not blasting my palate out. There's a great chocolate that was underneath, sort of an undercurrent. Very balanced first third. Very enjoyable. Not a... I mean, if you took a typical Connecticut and made it more interesting but didn't go crazy with the quote-unquote new wave Connecticut. That's what the first third was. And the second third was kind of more of that, just with the cedar and the chocolate kind of trading places in the palate. A little bit of hay, like that traditional Connecticut hay kind of coming in there to round it out. So first third and second third for me were good. And then the last third, I think the intensity and the complexity fell off a little bit. So that chocolate kind of went away, and it was really just hay and cedar, which for me... 
certainly matches what a traditional Connecticut flavor is, is and, that, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that, to me, is a pretty average profile for what's in the marketplace. Uh, in terms of burning and construction, it actually uh, sparked some discussion because I marked the construction is amazing. Uh, it did have a minor canoe and a minor touch-up. So uh, I don't know how to describe that. So for me, if I have more than one touch-up, uh, to me, it falls below the amazing score for us. Uh, so my criteria, I think, are pretty tight. But uh, certainly, you know, if you want to send me an email and tell me I don't know how to rate burning construction, I will take that. Uh, in terms of draw, I actually found the draw kind of tight. Uh, about one and a half to two inches or two notches, I should say, into the resistance spectrum. So I rated the the draws good. Aaron, you were, you, what was your experience like? Uh, for me, the scratch with creamy wood, hay, mild baking spice. Uh, a little further in, the hay fades away. Uh, baking spice takes on more of a cinnamon profile to it. Uh, Retro Hill's got some creamy wood in there. Uh, about an inch and a quarter cinnamon transitions to a mild black pepper. As the third's wrapping up, a little bit of hay returns to the profile. Strength was at uh, mild medium. Uh, second third, creaminess fades away, leaves the wood, the hay, and the mild black pepper. Uh, profile is slightly dry. Uh, about half inch in, a little mustiness joins the profile. Uh, Retro Hill shows that musty wood. Um, as the second third's wrapping up, a little bit of cream returns, while the wood has hints of bitterness on random draws. Uh, strength remains at that mild medium mark. Uh, final third, uh, light bitterness becomes a regular player in the profile. Kind of goes along with that musty wood, the hay, and the cream. Uh, a little further in, cigar begins to warm up, brings kind of a toasted note to the profile. Uh, cream's gone. Uh, overall profile consists of musty and toasted wood. A little bit of mellow bitterness there. Uh, about an inch in, a vegetal note joins the profile, which replaces the toast. Uh, Retro Hell's got uh, musty wood and the vegetal note there. And uh, that's how kind of how things uh, wrap up. Uh, strength bumps up to slightly below medium. In regards to construction, uh, I thought the burn was perfect. It was straight the whole way. Um, ash held on an inch and a quarter increments. And uh, in regards to the draw, it was perfect. Had just amount of resistance I prefer. Uh, and just to be um, perfectly transparent, I'm the one that sent the hate mail to John. So uh, it'll be a discussion that we have after the show. Um, <laughs> 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 All right. So overall, June, what were your thoughts on this? Um, overall, what did I think about the Casa Cuevas? Um, so it was, I, I liked it. I mean, this is, uh, I, I think I realized I like, so like when I first started smoking cigars, I smoked a lot of kind of good shades. I didn't know that back then, but it makes sense because, you know, lighter on the strength, um, not as heavy. But I realized as I kind of go through my cigar journey, um, I, I really enjoy a Connecticut shade. Uh, something that's very much so like this, like that's something that's like really sweet, creamy, toasty bread, you know, got just enough of an accent to kind of a spice. And that's exactly what this was. Um, so, you know, all those other times that Bishop about, you know, Casa Cuevas not really making any big marks for me. Um, I think this is definitely the, the favorite line of theirs, of mine. So how about you, Seth? What are your overall thoughts? Dog, shut up. Um, <laughs> The hair, uh, of the hair of the dog the hair of the dogs man they're going um it's not a bad connecticut but i wasn't impressed by it i think it lacked a lot of complexity um some transitioning um and i think if you look at the cigars you know this is kind of a smaller company connecticut this isn't a mainstream connecticut that i think if you want to have a successful connecticut um y you have to be a little bit more wowing than this um it's one of these things I just don't think it's going to speak to a lot of like those everyday consumers. You're going to reach a lot of people. So I, I mean, that's unfair to put them the score. I just thought it was lacking. So that's just a little side note right there. How about you, John? What are your overall thoughts? Yeah. I mean, to me, this was in that nice middle ground where I think if you pick up a Connecticut off the shelf, you're either getting a class Connecticut or you're getting what is a new wave Connecticut, which is a Connecticut with lots of spice and baking spice and everything kind of down to nine, which is nothing wrong with that. But it seems like there's a big middle ground that people could fit in. And I can honestly say this is kind of the first one that I've run into with maybe the exception of one other manufacturer that really neatly fits in there. So it doesn't blow your palate out. Like Jim was saying, it's, it's kind of smack dab medium the flavors are all balanced they're all there's some nuance there's some complexity to me this was good all the way across i really enjoyed it i would definitely smoke this again what about you Aaron? yeah i thought this was a pretty nice you know traditional connecticut shade offering um you know it didn't get you know some of that bitterness that a lot of uh connecticut shade cigars get 
um, until the final third, which was nice. Um, you typically going to get that at some point. Um, price point is super attractive for this. I mean, seven dollars for uh, a true Toro. Um, you know, it, it's hard to beat that. Um, so if you're a fan of milder cigars um, and uh, you know price is a factor. There's no reason not to give this a shot. Um, I'd have no problem smoking this again. Um, this kind of fits in my wheelhouse of something I would say that, you know, I would look forward to smoking this in the morning with some coffee and kind of getting, seeing what that pairing looks like. But yeah, I, I think I would agree with June that this is probably my favorite of the, of the various lines that we've smoked from them so far. Um, so getting into the scores, uh, we'll start at the top. June, you gave it a 6.92. John, you were next at 6.52. I gave it a 6.10, and Seth gave it a 5.65. So June 692. Um, yeah, it's a great score. Um, I really enjoyed it. I, you know, I hope it gets cheaper at some point so I could go buy some. Because <laughs> right, you know, I don't believe it paid MSRP for cigars. All right, John, 6.52. Yeah, I, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I think the price point is attractive. I was surprised that it didn't come in first. I kind of figured I would be top of the mark here, so kind of nice that i'm still back in that middle ground not not first not last but this is if you like connecticut's and you want to move up to something a little more complex th this one's a no-brainer 100 percent. yeah my 6.10 i think uh you know slightly above average uh, flavor profile fantastic construction um you know price doesn't factor into our score but that helps it after the fact so i would have you no don't problems. hand out a lot of sixes yeah I, I would have no problem smoking smoking more of these all right Seth, 5.65 Nah, it's an average cigar, man. Yeah. Boom. That's what I gave it. I know. Right. What do, why do I get crap for being a hater? Yeah, the yeah, no, we gave you crap. Dude, Who said that? Who said dude, that? Dude, Loomis, June, Loomis June even liked it. Loomis thing. even June's liked it. Loomis little yeah. thing. Yeah. He I, doesn't even like cigars. You just rated the dog. It, you know, you have to give Seth credit. He commits either way. He commits to <laughs> hot or he commits to low. He just, no, he that, just commits. Usually. It's one of these things. I, <laughs> Seth, I love your What do you have against Gazaguavis? <laughs> I got the Quavis, man. Yeah. So. All right. Any other thoughts on this from you guys? Do you guys know what Quavis means, by the way? Casas. No. What is it? Caves. I just Googled House caves. It. House caves. caves. House of no, Caves. it can't. It, no, I, it can't be that. It's no. got to be a little bit more. Com well, maybe it is, but it, it just Three seems more like translations. it's got to be. Hold on. Yeah, there maybe, you go. Maybe, uh, cave, maybe it speaks cavern, to the... pothole. Yeah, it's not. There you pothole. go. It's pothole. It's a pothole cigar. <laughs> I, told, I thought I was about to read butthole. I was like, wait a minute, uh, pothole. <laughs> maybe it Anyways. speaks to the darkness that lives inside all of us. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going real deep now. <laughs> All, right. All right, dude. All right. We'll if you just catch this video on YouTube and you want to learn more about caves, you can read the full written review on the website, developmenthouse.com. Follow us on all the social media channels, and uh, you can catch all of our review recaps on podcasts. So iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We will catch you on the next one. Guess it,